So I was looking at all my, you know, missing the raves, wanting to get back out there, um, jumping and shouting and dancing for joy. And then I happened to stumble across my uh, previous party or club night that I used to put on with my friend in the Alibi. That was one of the first um, introductions I had to kind of putting on an event and also my first introduction to kind of electronic dance music in that extent. Um, I kind of got introduced to it mainly through the kind of minimal tech kind of people, right? Big on Ricardo Villa Lobos and Luciano, those kind of people. But mostly due to the whole, the, you know, back in the day when I used to go to like, you know, under 16s parties at like local community, uh, community links kind of places and stuff, whatever it may be. I always had this idea of kind of putting on my own event. And in the moment I kind of got... Uh, step my foot into the kind of dance music scene i was like wow this is definitely a part i want to be included in i was lucky enough that when i got started working at this uh really cool store in london called 1948 when it first opened i got a very great opportunity to kind of work underneath this guy who was friends with a guy that was going to uh, open the bar called the alibi they put us into contact before they're about to open it i didn't really know how big of a deal these guys were behind the scenes but they were they were kind of um you know uh the sort of puppet masters in certain things there could have people that were kind of putting certain scenes together certain bars restaurants clubs um artists collectives all this sort of cool shit and then they opened up the alibi and we happened to be the first group of like uh promoters that were putting on events there and it turned into one of our one of the most popular nights there if not one of the most well i guess in the group of one of the most popular there's a few more that were pulling in a lot more numbers than us but it was great to just be able to cultivate a club night right um or cultivate a little community of people be able to put together a good lineup um i learned how to dj through this um avenue as well i got to dj in front of people through this avenue too it was flipping eye-opening and, and one of the moments i cherished the most because it again opened me up to a whole group of people socially that i probably wouldn't have met without going through the alibi because I think I would have met loads of people anywhere socially because I would have definitely gone through and done an event. I've always been a person, especially when it comes to nightlife and dance music. Um, I want to take part, you know, review the situation, take part, take over. Remember? Yeah, you remember that uh, Dizzy Rascal track? Uh, I think it's called Cut Em Off, right? Is it Cut Em Off? I think it's Cut Em Off. Where is it? I think I might have it here. Yeah, there we go. Cut Em Off. Do you remember this one? Uh, I socialize and negotiate situation. I socialize and negotiate situation. Yeah, that's that's basically me. That's basically me when it comes to um getting involved. I want to get involved. I want to go out. I want to socialize, but I also want to get involved. I want to go behind the camera. I want to play a part in it. And again, I started taking photographs at you know warehouse raids. I put together a scene. Um, R.I.P. My zine creeper. I might actually uh re um. I'm actually bringing back the dead once the world reopens. Um, I was DJing. I was putting on events. I was doing some door things, being a door picker. I just wanted to be involved. Right? I wanted to kind of immerse myself in the culture because I thought, hold on. If I'm reading up on all these seminal people that set up all these amazing club nights and clubs and bars and put together these festivals, they're people just like you and I, right? And if they're able to do it and they're on, on, in their kind of local scene, I can kind of take whatever lessons that they've applied and apply it to mine. And of course, we did it, innit? We did it. And it was one of the, again, one of the best nights that was on the alibi we kind of um centered it more towards the uk funky uk garage then later it went into a bit of bass sort of theme and how we basically spec it is that we had like a usually a headliner and a co-headliner usually kind of and the night was from like 9 to 3 a.m which meant i usually did the graveyard shift which was from usually about eight or some doors actually open the alibi but it being a basement bar no one will come there until about 11 so i'd have to play to a crowd of like five people from like eight until 10 or 11 then the other guy that I was involved with doing so special with he'd take over from 11 to 12 and then the co-headliner would do from one to two and then the, the headliner would do from to to close by that time the alibi was absolutely heaving people jumping up in the air you know it was just absolutely incredible one of one of my most cherished moments something that i can't wait to get back into this is one of the um events that's still up on aria at the moment from the archives so special with ramsey and fen um and it's uh the alibi the 12th of august 2019 2011 right how long ago that was the alibi is obviously the cover that we did and i came up with the idea for our artwork which is essentially inspired by I'm going to say Vampire. Yeah, was it Vampire Weekend? It was Vampire Weekend. The album Contra. Remember the album Contra with the blonde girl kind of washed out in the little bit square with a white ball around it? That's where the kind of idea came behind it. And of course, this was during the whole um, Tumblr era of girls as well. 
right? People are always following random tumblers of random hot girls and models around the world and scenes and socialites. So I just be trawling through Tumblr. I had many, I had like, you know, over a hundred bookmarks of different little tumblers I'd follow and get loads of pictures of kind of under the radar models that people don't really know about, slap them on the background, whack some text over the top of it and Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt. So again, one of my most fondest memories and I remembered that I've actually got footage, I've got video footage of the actual event itself, this Ramsey and Fenn event that I recorded on my iPhone, which I have here. Uh, via my YouTube channel, just uploaded again from the 1st of September 29, 2011. Sorry, Ramsey and Fenn are so special. I'll play a bit of the clip for you now. Uh, let's go. Where is it? And again, this is what I was saying prior to all this stuff. I was saying that I wonder if all the clubs, because I think I was saying in the live stream that I wonder if all the, because there was a time when. Because when I was again the the second phase, I guess of my my life experience when I kind of kind of went, stopped doing uh, so special and I kind of went out to the more like tech housey underground techno EV events around here in London or whatever it may be, um, the peanut factory all that sort of stuff. There was uh there was a time when people really like to have footage of their events so they can kind of blast it all over social. So I'd kind of use it as an opportunity to kind of, you know, say I'm a photographer and take pictures of events and kind of get in free. That was always good or get guesses at least so I don't have to quick, I don't have to queue or anything. And then there was a time when that kind of stuff got a bit dated and people didn't want it anymore and it was looked at as a bit corny and then it, got, it kind of stopped and then the Boiler Room kind of popped up out of the place and then people were like, if, why would I let you record if Boiler Room going to do it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it got a bit weird. And then I guess in the last recent few years, there's been a lot of conversation around people feeling as if like the smartphones and the dance floor are ruining the whole clubbing experience right they want people to just kind of engross themselves and just kind of get you know centered and grounded in the actual you know rave itself and communicate with people da, 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 da. and then the conversation around the berlin community how they do stuff and they you know put stickers over your camera etc etc but i was wondering if in a post-covid world we might go back to that because people are going to want to capture the moment because they've not been out for so long they want to remember and hold on to it just in case you know touch wood doesn't happen but just in case another flipping variant comes out and uh, out of nowhere and we're all back in our homes again not able to go outside but then someone else made a comment on the live chat that oh actually what end up happening what people might just be like you know what the last thing i want to do is record stuff on my phone i just want to go out and let loose close my eyes and just kind of throw my hands in there and just dance who knows but regardless I'm definitely going to be taking some footage because why the hell not? And I remember, I remember all of this. I remember all of this. It's all coming back to me. Man, I miss raving so much. Ah, look at me, look at me. Oh, big up Oli Ran. <laughs> Man, how I miss raving so much. Please come back. Please come back. I beg of you. I want to be back on the dance floor. But yeah, man, like, it got me thinking, you know what? When things reopen again, guess what I'm going to do? Put on another club night. That's what I'm going to do to get involved because I've been, you know, I... I, I I sent out some feelings here and there to some online streaming shows to do some mixes on there, but you know how people are with this stuff, innit? So I've got my channel. My channel's popping off. Might as well do my own thing. Upload my test mixes, so definitely check those out. There's going to be some more coming at you very, very soon. Test mix on my channel, so make sure you check those out. Upload some of my text mixes. Do that. Put that out there. And then on the back end, what I'll end up doing is that I'll end up, when things reopen again, just put on my nights and kind of go around that way so I can kind of you know, shoehorn my way into the scene that way. So I'll be able to book my artists who I know and love, get them over, uh, pay them a good fee, show them a good time, but also have the ability to kind of have my friends warm up, you know, prior, which we did prior to this, right? In this event, you just have my friends kind of playing before the actual main guest comes on and you're able to kind of, you know, book your favorite DJs that you know and love and some other people in in, in between. So that's going to be something that I'm going to definitely do when we uh, get back to life as per normal. I was thinking about it prior, 
when you know lockdown was actually happening but now the situation how it is i definitely feel like i need to get my foot back in the ring and get back involved because that is something that really gave me a lot of just juju i felt a lot of i felt alive doing that thing you just feel it by the way i'm talking now i felt like you know that was it gave me a reason for flipping living for doing all that and nowadays i don't have a reason to be alive 